What's going on, everybody? We're back. It's your friend Will. This is the Memory Lapse. And uh, we're making a little bit of progress with our Red Deck Wins experiment, which we're going to continue some more today. Uh, so sorry if you're not interested in seeing this deck, but we are winning with it, and we're running a little experiment, so bear with us. Um, you can see we did a stream last night um, that I just played music. I didn't talk, so you didn't miss my, you know, amazing takes on the games. It was just me playing and listening to music. But yeah, we got up to gold tier one, and at some point we peaked out at halfway to halfway through the rank, so three little bars here. We had some pretty bad losses towards the end of the stream, but the important thing is that we were racking up wins, and of course we've been tracking um, using, what's the name of the app? Which is called mtgarena.pro tracker. And the UI of the site is pretty bad, but the thing that it does, which is keep track of whether you won or lost a game, uh, it tries to approximate what you played against to help you figure out your win rates against certain archetypes. I have not dug into that very well, because again, like the the way the data is all displayed to you is just really kind of web 1.0, it looks very bad. But I've taken the data that they surface, um, wins, losses, and times played, and have kind of created my own running spreadsheet. So. <clears throat> We've played a total of 59 games with red. Uh, our win-loss record is 35 and 24, so we're plus 11 on uh, wins, which is, explains you know how we've bumped up into gold from gold one from gold three. And we are running very, very close, if you want to round up, to a 60% win rate with the deck. Well, we've played a total of 309, round up to 310 minutes. Uh, the average time per game being 5.24 minutes, so 5.25 minutes, so that 5 minutes and 15 seconds per game, <clears throat> which I have to imagine is on the lowish side. The one thing I do want to look at when I have more time later, um, kind of like singling out wins versus losses, and perhaps if we, you know, play and play this up to 100 games, we'll have enough data to just figure out like. You know what the average time of win is, what the average time of a loss is, what our win rate is for games that go over seven minutes. I suspect it's going to be a lot lower. And how does that play into our decision making? Because obviously ranking up is, it's a game of numbers, right? It's about fitting in the most efficient number of games you can um, within the time period that you have. So if we see that I'm losing a lot of games that go past seven minutes, what does it tell us? Like, does it tell us that Unless we're like one top deck away from winning some of those games, maybe we should be giving up on them faster. But all that being said, we're going to try to play a few more because this is a playing stream. And let's see if we can add a few little gold bars below our rank this morning before we have to head off to work. So steam can down. So I've played like a lot of red mirrors. Hmm. Oh, this is like a green white explore deck. Interesting. This is something that I kind of want to come back to. But it does seem good. All right, we don't want to throw the steamkin away. <clears throat> we'll wait until we find a shock or something for the branch walker. Ugh, that's really bad. Oh, we're just gonna force through damage and hope they don't have like three more explorer creatures here. They're missing a second green for a Jade Light. So they could have opted not to play it last turn to play Memorial. Alright, excellent finding. Yeah, so this walker is super scary. They clearly don't have an explore creature though. The question is, 
Are we waiting to draw more burn to go to their to clear the way to attack? Or are we pushing through damage here and then planning to burn their face and hoping they don't gain life? I think we're doing the latter. I have a feeling that they have to have at least some more creatures in hand, like a Tristani or something, so chipping them down now. Getting in three damage here. There's also a chance they don't block because, you know, now we can just play like a Chain Whirler and take their Ch Wild Growth Walker off. Maybe their hand is poor enough that they figure they can't afford to block. Yep, there's Tristani. Oh, so we could be kicking this one off with a loss and we drew our seventh land. So yeah, I think we'll just skip here. They're going to gain too much life on the crackback and we no longer have good attacks. So... That was a hand that just kind of bricked out, unfortunately. I think if we, if they didn't have the binding, we would have had that 4-4 in play and we would have been able to push for board control there. All right, we're on the play again. We've got burn, 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 this team can. Steamkin has been uh, Steamkin has been an interesting card in this deck. It's been really bad in general. Like when you're playing in situations like this on turn two, it doesn't seem to get. It, it gets so much respect that it kind of costs you damage. No one wants to <clears throat> let you have it. Like I'm expecting this just to get shocked here, and now my hand is garbage. Oh, I actually survived. So I I don't know. Like I think it's hard to. Oh wow, that was a free one. They must have been missing a land drops or something. Can't imagine why they would just scoop there. I mean, our hand was miserable. But maybe the prospect of letting a Steamkin literally run away for a few turns was not exciting to them. Another thing I've noticed is as I've moved up in gold, I'm still getting paired against gold fours and threes. Which makes me think that there's a lot of people who are stuck down there like I was for a couple days. Maybe they're doing the same thing I was doing, which is constantly switching decks. Not taking like a more measured approach to the format. So here's an actually interesting choice. We can shock and get in one damage. We can play the Pyromancer. Yeah, I think we're going to play the Pyromancer and use the Firebrand to... Remove this elf. That gives him two damage this turn, a potential two more, and we get to use the shocks to get rid of uh, X2s. Yeah, so we'll shock this. Get him for two. And then we're going to look to risk factor probably next turn. I'm shocking here because from when I've played these decks, I know that my default is almost always to block and I don't want to lose this, this is my only source of reusable damage alright so this resolves we shock it with the trigger on the stack so we don't want it to go to 4-3 uh, and they would have had that option if they wanted to All right, so we're not in an amazing spot, having drawn our fifth land. We would have much preferred this to be a spell, but Risk Factor does represent a potential eight damage here. Which puts them, you know, barring them gaining a bunch of life, it puts them in a situation that's not great for them. This kind of sucks, though. I do think we have to risk factor here. It's a reasonable shot. They give us three cards, and then we can play the Steamkin. Wow, they took it. Okay, cool. This looks like it represents Brass's Contempt to me. Which could explain why they took it. 
so I could see this getting contempted. Or the Lava Runner getting contempted. Yeah, so they have something. So they go back up to seven. And they found their Wild Growth Walker. That's really unlucky for us. Yeah. So we'll look at the next card, but this is probably a scoop at this point. They're at 10, they have a Chupacabra. We're never gonna get damage in again. I guess barring uh, Experimental Frenzy on top, we scoop this one, yeah. So, I mean, I think that when the, the board state gets to something like this, like we clearly had our push, we made our plays, and they just had removal, removal, and life gain, so we're not gonna beat it. The green black decks have been the hardest on the climb. I don't, I wonder if the stats really reflect that, but we definitely have seen a lot of wild growth walker out of green. That has made it tough. Sometimes we've been able to catch them, but more often than not, we haven't. This is, this is tough, but I think this is also a keep only because we have phoenixes and experimental frenzies to draw into. Another green deck. All right, so I think we're just gonna play it the same way. Try to keep them off of ramping. I like using this guy as a shock for those one ones because very rarely does he do much more <laughs> than that. On the play, sometimes you get one attack in and then after that, nothing. Okay. I guess we're steam cleaning this turn and looking to shock lightning strike next turn. Double land. Yeah, so if we draw any kind of uh if we draw Experimental Frenzy, I think we're actually in a great spot. And if we or if we just draw like a couple Chain Whirlers in a row. If they have removal here, ugh. These videos are gonna make people think I'm lying like because we're just getting owned so badly by, by Green Black a couple times in a row here. Just them having all the life gain and also our draws, or our, I mean, this is the thing that I found is like I've I've rarely mulliganed with this deck other than one land hands that are just unplayable because I just don't think you really can like when you win games you're winning with almost all your cards losing one card is such a disadvantage. They're actually almost empty-handed here. Like I really I've won some games mulliganing where I've gotten off a good experimental frenzy, but that's basically it. Wouldn't be surprised to see them block here. They have plenty of land in play. They have a Carnage Tyrant here. Wow, nothing? All right, well, I expect they'll take four. <clears throat> Hit him down to 11. Risk back to them again. So this is these are just like lands that are hanging out in their hand, yeah. Oh, if they keep bricking out, we have a shot. Us <clears throat> continuing to brick out, not good. Hold this for another risk factor, potentially. Alright, this has turned into one that we can win. Lava Runner is a sick one. Alright, so now we're just one three damage spell away from winning. Plus, they need to have removal, so this card has to be fairly good for them. Kind of good, so they have to make a blocker. At least they're not drawing off of it. Yeah. So pretty much any magic card off the top works. Yep, thank you.
So Risk Factor really did a ton of work there. The 8 damage was the difference between... I, I mean, I've liked that card. There's some games where it does nothing, but the 8 damage for little card investment can be, make the difference between like winning games like that and not. And we've been on the other side of Risk Factor too, where you feel like you have a lock on the game, you don't want to give them cards. It, actually playing with, with red deck now makes me think that there are games where if I'm at a really high life total, I should just be giving the red deck cards. Whereas like my default was like, oh, I'm at 19, just I'll take four. But seeing the way it plays out from this side, the game for my opponent just takes four and four and then like opens up a window for me to get back in the game. Um, much easier off of a risk factor. So I don't know. It's one of those things where like you play a deck that you have, you've played against a lot, but you never played with it. It helps you think differently about playing against it. All right, so we have a Frenzy. And if we draw a uh, land, likely Chain Whirler is going to have some effect on the board. Chain Whirler is a lot worse on the draw, because <clears throat> out of the white decks, the thing you fear most is them like playing a turn three Loxodon and upgrading all their 1-1s one to get out of Chain Whirler range. All right, so we're just going to burn that. Even though we could like very casually just try to chain whirler it, I think if once they enchant it up, we don't have that option. And we have a long game plan here. Should I just shock this? Oh, it didn't let me do it. Really have to add a stop there? Come on. Of course they have like they must have dived down here I, I was hoping that after this thing resolved it was gonna let me shock it and then i just didn't have a shot a stop it and step just kind of ridiculous if the opponent plays something on the end step you should be given the option to respond to it after it resolves that being said they only drew one i think we're in an okay spot This could get countered, but we're just playing for Experimental Frenzy at this point. This is a great blocker. Oh, they're gonna play this and what's retort. So as long as they don't have another obsession, we probably top deck better than they do. The only card they have that's really good in this matchup is the, the Jin. Wow, they did draw an obsession. Oh. It really costs us not to have a stop on that end step, but it's just how it is. So we're just hoping this is not another dive down or spell pierce. And we're going to do this now before they get a chance to draw. Okay. I'm not worried about finding a way to win because the Frenzy's going to do that for us eventually. Wow, the third one! Dude! Three in the top 14. Let me take a turn off from having to burn your creatures. So I guess we're hoping we draw land here. Let me just clear this for a shock. Yes. So we have Wizard's Lightning for their turn. We have First Factor for their turn. Untap Experimental Frenzy. So we just don't want them to find Jin here. They take the four. All right. Our top of deck versus their top decks. I'll take that. Uh, 
I'm just gonna kill the creature here. Continue to control the game. All right, we got an attack in. All right, well, this at least pumps the Steamkin. I wonder what their hand is. They could definitely have a uh, Merfolk Trickster. Let's just attack like this. No trickster, okay. All right, we got him. We got through three curious obsessions. Thank you. And that one went long, so that's gonna skew the uh, the data a little bit as adding a long wind to the the pool there but let's call this video here 21 minutes we got to talk a little bit about the process um and show off some more gameplay and we ended up netting two wins on that session so that's awesome and uh we're gonna do one or two more this morning before we head off to work so i gotta end this one here i hope you enjoyed let me know what you think of the experiment in general um, not so much interested in hearing about whether or not you like seeing red deck, but I guess, you know, if you feel like the need to opine, go for it. Um, as long as you're subscribing in the process, especially. So thanks again, everybody. We'll be back again soon with uh, another set of games.